What's going on guys? Welcome back. Thanks for watching. So a few days ago we did a video on probably my least favorite gun I've ever fired in my life. And that's saying something because I've shot quite a few at this point. But none of them are as painful to shoot as this. The Bond Arms 4570 Cyclops Derringer. If you're not familiar with these, go watch the last video. But the Cyclops is a 28 ounce single shot Derringer chambered <laughs> in 4570 and looking at the cartridge you're probably thinking that looks way too big for that tiny little gun yeah it is now we shot this thing quite a bit probably too much for one day to be honest my wrist is still feeling it but what we didn't do is a self-defense test so today we have a ballistic dummy lab human head and we are going to find out how effective is the world's most powerful pocket pistol Let's do it. All right, I'll go ahead and shoot this beast one time for you guys, just to show you what it looks like. Then we'll do the self-defense test. For this one, I will shoot the 405 grain Grizzly 4570. It says it's going about 1,100 feet per second. Out of this barrel, it's probably going about half that, so. I'll aim for that red steel target. There's a very high likelihood I won't hit it, but we'll try. Yeah, you never get used to that. Somehow I actually did hit the steel target. And one thing that really surprised me when I was editing the last video is the lack of muzzle rise. It doesn't move nearly as much as it feels like. So the recoil doesn't translate on camera, but take my word for it, it does not feel good. All right guys, there's one more thing that I wanna try with the little Cyclops Derringer, and that is 3A body armor. So most 4570s out of a rifle will blow right through this stuff. Obviously with the pistol, you're losing a large percentage of that velocity. So I just wanna see what happens. If it does go through, you could possibly call this the smallest handgun that will defeat 3A body armor. Let's find out. 405 grain bullet. I don't think it's gonna go through, honestly, but. Let's see. Woo! I tell you what, the recoil of that feels like it should absolutely go through. <laughs> but I just know how much velocity it's getting out of this tiny little barrel. It's probably not enough, but maybe I'm wrong. Let's find out. And there's the entrance hole right there. Definitely a big one. If I flip it over, it does not look like there's an exit hole. This is from a different round that we've shot before, and I believe I can feel the bullet right there. There it is. So it did flatten it out quite a bit. Actually, I assume probably that hard brick of computer paper behind it is what did that. But there's our 4570 that did not go through the body armor. Obviously our computer paper just got yeeted off the table and there is some damage to that. So if you were wearing that body armor, you'd probably have a broken chest and some broken ribs because that was quite the impact. Now I know you're probably thinking I could have shot a more powerful 4570 like the FTX or the 430 grain barrel load, but I didn't want to. It really sucks to shoot those, and I don't think it would have changed the result. That barrel is just too short. You're not getting enough velocity. And to be honest, most people that are carrying the Cyclops Derringer are probably not using full power 4570. It's just not worth it. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get to it. 4570 Cyclops self-defense test. I have our ballistic dummy lab head 
screwed into the table using a two x four, so it doesn't go anywhere when we shoot it. Now in the last video, I shot every 4570 that I had from a subsonic all the way up to the 430 grain plus P bear load. If you wanna see me shoot all those, go watch that video. It was absolutely brutal. But I think for the self-defense test, the best round to use would be this one, the 325 grain Hornady FTX. Number one, because it's the only full power hollow point that I have, and number two, it's the fastest 4570 that I have. I think this one's going about 2,000 feet per second. And out of that tiny little barrel, we're gonna need all the velocity we can get. All right, yes, we are very close because I don't wanna risk messing this up and accuracy is not a strong suit of this thing. I also changed my coat just in case we make a little mess, so. Here's the round, 325 grain FTX. Let's get this over with. By the way, this is not a cop-out to save my hand. I think these are every bit as painful as the 430 grain bear load. You can watch the video and see for yourself, but they both suck about the same, so. Let's do it. Oh my goodness. Well, it looks like a good hit, thank God, because I do not wanna do that again. And I tell you what, I've shot a lot of guns throughout the years, a lot of very powerful hand cannons, and nothing is even close to as painful as this. Not to sound like a broken record, but it really is in a league of its own, especially when you start shooting powerful 4570s like this. It just sucks. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the damage. There is our entrance hole right there on the forehead, and you can see how big that entrance hole is. You can also see all of the unburnt gunpowder that came out of that tiny little barrel. It's all over the face and the top of the head. So that shows you how much of that powder is not getting burned. And then over here, you can obviously see it did a ton of collateral damage, pretty much exploded the entire thing, which you don't see very often with the handgun. If we go around to the back, there is also a massive exit hole right there on the back of the head. So it looks like the bullet pretty much stayed in one piece, which surprises me. I'll be honest, I did not expect it to stay in one piece and just punch right through like that. I would give anything to find that bullet right now because I bet it looks pretty dang cool. Probably not gonna happen but we'll go ahead and see if there's any fragments inside the head. It looks like it pretty much stayed intact. Okay, looks like nothing in there. Oh, there's the little red polymer tip that fills the hollow point cavity on those Hornady rounds. That's pretty cool. So that did not pass all the way through, which might be a sign that the bullet did at least start to expand. I'm gonna try to break this thing open a little bit. And I don't see any bullet fragments in here. It looks like that entire thing did pass all the way through. I'm back here looking on the ground to see if anything pops out at me, but we have so many bullets back here, it would be hard to pinpoint the one we just shot unless I find a 4570 covered in green fluid, I guess, but I don't think I'm gonna find it, unfortunately. Either way, that's the result. I would say that is easily the most effective pocket pistol I have ever tested on the channel. I don't even know what would come close, to be honest. By the way, in the comments to the last video, I had some people questioning whether or not this would qualify as a pocket pistol. Well, I have it in my pocket right now. It does print a little bit. I'm not super happy to see you, but it definitely fits in your pocket. And you could carry it with the chamber loaded and the hammer down. So I would say you could call this a pocket pistol, but 
There it is. Very powerful, very effective, and definitely very lethal. All right, guys, that is gonna conclude our second video on the world's most powerful pocket pistol, the Bond Arms Cyclops Derringer 4570. Hopefully, it's our last video we ever make with this thing. I hate it, I never wanna see it again, and I definitely never wanna shoot it again. If you want a powerful little pocket gun like this, I would say go with some of the other calibers that they have. 45, 357 Magnum, even the 410. They would all be a lot better than the 4570. So I would recommend you stay away from this one unless you just enjoy pain or you're an absolute beast because personally, I do not like it at all. Now, with all that being said, I'm gonna contradict myself a little bit here because this is also one of the coolest little guns that I've ever shot. If you don't think about the pain, it's freaking awesome. I mean, it's a 4570 coming out of a four inch gun. And in something this size, it probably can't be beat as far as just pure horsepower goes. So very powerful, very effective. If you saw the result on our ballistic dummy head, it would definitely do the job. Hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button for me, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.